Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another tropical forecast and overall uh, update here on Hurricane Larry here. Hurricane Larry is now a major Category 3 hurricane sitting at 125 miles an hour. This is obviously a monster hurricane right now, which is brewing still across a portion of the uh, MDR region as well. Keeping a close eye on Bermuda as they could very well get a piece of Hurricane Larry here, whether it's the outer banding or even portion of the eye wall. So we're very well keeping a close eye on Bermuda here. They may get tropical watches rather soon if this track continues to verify of the National Hurricane Center. Because although most likely will not make a direct landfall due to the overall trough and steering here, uh, but it's still going to be rather close considering the symmetrical wind field that it is going to bring in some winds across that general vicinity. We could very well see some tropical watches being added very soon here uh, for Bermuda. But there is Larry here, an absolute monster hurricane. It looks very good, um, visible, and as well IR. Its minimal to the pressure is 958 millibars. This storm is continuing to rapidly to defy, and this pressure is dropping dramatically. I don't know. I don't remember. But I think yesterday, uh, less than 24 hours ago, it was 974. So this thing is rapidly, rapidly decreasing here, pressure-wise. So this is obviously not only rapid intensification, uh, but I believe this has already gone through Bob and Janus, uh already here, dropping more than 24 millibars within 24 hours. So this not only has rapidly intensified, but it has obviously uh, gone through Bob and Janus, uh, obviously, which is not, which is not too common whatsoever with an MDR storm, considering how early it is already. Typically in the MDR story, you see them get this strength here, like we saw with Irma, kind of over here in the actual Caribbean, but not this far uh, early here. And obviously, we can tropics from all the way over here. So this has obviously been like a 2017 type storm here. We have not seen a a, a tropical storm form so close off the Af off Africa since uh, actually since um, 2017. We have not seen anything like that since 2018. Florence was kind of uh, way up here when it, when it formed a tropical storm, but again, this is. This form of the tropics from all the way over here. Now it's becoming a major Category 3 hurricane, likely to become a Category 4 very soon. And then we still have MS 91L at a 0% for, for 48 hours. And then five and a five days is at 30%. So we're gonna keep a close eye on that, but we're gonna obviously continue to watch out for Hurricane Larry. So I can look at the overall discussion here. Uh so let's get overall to the actual peak. So the peak is still remaining at 140 miles an hour. Or it's actually now the peak is now 145 miles an hour, which I somewhat predicted here, so it may, this actually may get stronger than Hurricane Teddy of last year, which was a 140 monarch out to sea hurricane. So right now it's obviously 125, likely to become a Category 4 by the end of the day here. I wouldn't doubt it's a Category 4 on the 5 o'clock advisory, then 140 within 24 hours, so continuing a 15, maybe even 20 mile an hour strengthening within 24 hours, so still continuing that really strong and rapid dissipation going on here. Uh, the latest, uh, the latest National Hurricane Intensity Forecast keeps Larry intensifying over the next 24 to 36 hours, with only a very gradual decay thereafter due to the somewhat less favorable, um, dynamical environment here. Uh, obviously, it's a very strong storm at this point, 125 knots. Uh, let's get a look here at what the overall, what the overall other portions of the advisory are saying here. So, overnight this morning, Larry appears to have gone through a rather quick eye replacement cycle, which is obviously known as the a a EWRC, uh, which is IOR replacement cycle. Uh, the most recent uh, 1,000 uh, thousand UTC GMI microwave pass suggests that Larry now has a large eye and, a, and surrounding eye wall with a very strong overall inner core here. Um, obviously, it's a really, a really strong core and a clearing eye at this point. We're seeing even positive, uh, positive convection there with around 10 degrees Celsius, so obviously showing the storm is really clearing its eye quickly. Um, overall, that's kind of what, really what we have so far, basically. Uh, it's basically the overall discussion, the overall summary of what we have uh, for uh, Hurricane Larry. Obviously, Hurricane Larry, obviously Hurricane Larry looks like an absolute monster. There you can see a really large, trying to clear an eye, an eye really right there. You see Overall, there's the eye right there. However, it's not the clear, so getting some those higher cyrus clouds and the cumulus clouds kind of overshooting and obviously uh, kind of covering the overall eye. But obviously, there's a very large, clear area of basically positive convection there. And that's obviously where we're seeing that really strong 
inner core there with obviously that lowest pressure of 958 millibars. Uh, sorry, yeah, 958 millibars. So again, obviously it's so much really, really small. But it kind of like reminds me of uh, Hurricane Linda, I believe. So Hurricane Linda, which was in the Eastern Pacific this year. Linda looks very similar to this here. This is definitely not the most, this is definitely not the most common type system you see in the MDR. Uh, it's very uh, concentrical, basically. A really nice looking eye wall. The eye wall covers like basically half the, half the radius of this actual hurricane itself. They're really strong and flow there. Looks like there is a little bit of dryer trying to cut off any initiation going on within the southwest quadrant. We're not seeing much initiation going on as widespread as we're seeing in the eastern quadrant like this because we are seeing some dryer trying to sneak in here. And you can kind of see that there is dryer based on the, the wavy cloud tops like this, basically. The, those wavy, uh, it's basically that's how you can tell there is a little bit dryer getting to the system. Or at least not getting into it, weakening it, but I mean around the system itself there. There is, obviously, you see that really strong inflow. There's some slight amount of dry air, basically, right here. But overall, very strong moisture bubble, and it's not going to get anywhere close to the actual eye itself. You're not going to weaken it. But there you see, the, oh, as well, strong outflow channels here. Really strong outflow channel on the eastern quadrant, as well, upper-level anti-cyclone, keeping this storm from getting sheared off by the ridge, uh, which is obviously to the north of, this, of, north of the axes. But overall, this was looking pretty good there. Really strong outflow, really strong inflow, uh, kind of cutting off the difference between the eye, between the eye wall and the actual banding itself. Let's take a look at the overall convection here because I want you guys to see the actual eye itself here. Although the cloud tops are obviously kind of covering uh, the actual eye itself, so there's the overall eye right here. Obviously, a big, large area of basically little, little to no convection, little to uh, no negative convection. We're actually seeing positive convection here. Um, around 10 degrees Celsius, and there you see the dryer kind of limiting any initiation in the southwest quadrant. But looking at really overall intense eye wall there, it looks like this most likely will soon to go through an, a second eye wall replacement within the past uh, 12 hours or so, so likely to start getting a second eye wall, which will help this storm obviously get to a category four strength. So this is obviously a old look at the latest A scan, however, it's still giving us a better idea of what they picked up on. So here's the latest look at the uh, last A scat run or pass we have for Larry, and they actually supported uh, 958 millibars, which is what we have right now, and 110 knots, which is basically still weaker. Though so actually, yeah, this is 110 knots. Yeah, this is actually 100. And, yeah, 110 knots is 125 miles or 125 miles an hour, I believe so. Uh, so yeah, this A scat is basically, although it's old, it's basically it has the same numbers as basically the National Hurricane Center. There is the overall eye right there. You can see really intense winds here on that northern quadrant. We don't have any data from the actual eastern quadrant because of the past, uh, but overall you can see some really strong westerlies. You can just see really intense westerlies, and that is showing you that we are seeing a really strong inner core and a really strong overall eye wall. There you see these winds kind of coming from the northeast and then they're going basically due south and there you see the southwest release and now showing you that really strong kind of clockwise flow and then it's showing you this core is absolutely close obviously it's kind of uh, obvious it's close why wouldn't it be close as a category three let's actually get a look at the overall 89 color here this thing looks like just an absolute monster if you look at the 89 color ir forecast i mean this is showing you an absolute monster hurricane there very large and basically somewhat annular eye there that we have this is obviously a pretty annular and symmetrical storm uh, you can see obviously it's a little bit thicker wind field wise for the eastern quadrant but overall it's pretty a pretty good system let's take a look at the overall conditions the first thing we'll be looking at is the overall sst as of today so obviously the storm is basically within this vicinity right here so we're going through some cooler water than it was for the past few days but still going over 27 to spots of 27.5 degrees Celsius waters and as it continues through that northern turn here It's going to go into a lot warmer waters with a little bit more ocean heat content than we have right now It's going to be going over areas of 28.5 to spotty areas of even 29 degrees Celsius Which will allow the potential for it getting to a long living Category 3 plus hurricane so obviously it's already category 3 now It's most likely going to be a major hurricane for the next few days even getting up to 145 miles an hour. So actually, 
since this is actually going to be very similar to Ida's strength here, which is kind of weird to think about as well, it's going to be very similar to Teddy's strength. So it's between Ida and Teddy's strength, and there is a chance it could very well get to 150 miles an hour. But is there a chance of this becoming a Category 5? I honestly don't think so. Uh, I just don't think this will become a Category 5. However, I do think it could very well become 145 miles an hour, like predicted. And there's even a small chance it could get to 150. But I think the 145 Monarch range is a little bit more reasonable as after it gets near Bermuda, it'll go into more con less conducive environmental conditions. And overall, it gets sped up by the jet stream here. You're taking it into those cooler waters quickly. And overall, just a really high altitude where it just won't survive whatsoever. So that's why I'm not thinking of a Category 5. It would have to be like a Category 3 like here or here for it to have any chance of becoming a Category 5. And obviously, it had to go kind of this way instead of that way, if that makes sense. But that's what we have in the SST so far. Let's take a look at the overall ocean heat content. This low pressure is currently over right now. So there's the actual low of Larry right here. And it's going over, obviously, some ocean heat content values of around 40. This was spots of nearly 60 meters of 80 degree plus Fahrenheit water. So obviously, it's not the deepest ocean heat content. However, it is not sustainable to keep the storm strengthening. However, as it goes further to the western vicinity, it will start slightly go into further, deeper, and obviously a more intense ocean heat content, getting numbers of actually 60, and even numbers maybe of over 65, near, even near 70. But you can kind of see these values right here are basically uh, within anywhere from the 20s to the uh, as high as the 40s, but these values here are going to be closer to the 70s. And obviously, as it goes further, closer to Bermuda, it will be getting ocean heat content values of over 100 meters of 80 degree Fahrenheit waters. Here's a more widespread look here at the ocean heat ocean heat content map. So obviously, like I did say, it's kind of going through some waters right now. They're basically within the 25s, even the 40s. However, it's going to go into more favorable atmosphere uh, water-wise as it's going to go into ocean heat content, like I did say, within the 70s. And even some spots there into the 80s, as it goes closer to Bermuda, it's going to be getting to spotty areas of nearly 100 meters uh, of 80 degree Fahrenheit water. So obviously water water wise it will start to become more favorable Obviously that's, that won't be the only thing stimulating this category 4 strength But it's going to be a pretty big factor uh, to that strength or strengthening phase Let's take like, a look here at the overall new national hurricane forecast map as of 11 a.m So obviously like I did say the storm is rather symmetrical uh, with a little bit more expansive hurricane winds on the eastern quadrant there like I did say so really watching out for a little bit more uh, kind of stimulated towards specifically the east of the actual low pressure, which will allow uh, a little bit good news for Bermuda at least. Like I did say, it'll be a major hurricane for the next few days here. Even seeing as a major for third, as far as third, it's basically what, it's Thursday. That's basically five days of just straight up category three plus. And obviously today was count, count as day six. So this is just absolutely crazy. A long track major hurricane. Thankfully, it most likely will not hit Bermuda. However, again, they are in the little edge of the uh, of the cone itself, and if this this stays rather symmetrical and continues to expand, we may get tropical storm winds sustained for Bermuda. Let's now get a look at the latest eighteen or sorry, twelve ZGFS. So they have obviously within the next twelve hours at nine hundred and sixty six millibars. Obviously, they are behind the storms once again. And they don't, they don't actually get it towards, they don't they don't even have it getting to the pressure at that right now. This is obviously 958 millibar right now, yet they don't they don't have it getting to 958 right now. So 12V GFS is basically kind of useless. But we can get a kind of idea based on the track, but strength wise, the GFS is very far behind. Minimum they have it at 963, it's five millibars behind. And they just have it kind of weakening pressure wise or strength uh, the pressure going up there. As it most likely encountered a little bit last year, but there's the ridge. Uh, obviously, it kind of strengthened a little bit there. Uh, it's gonna kind of go like up like that, and then kind of dip like that. And it's obviously gonna kind of keep it from going anywhere westward. And I'll go deeper into that when we actually look at the shear valleys. But GFS having it just missing Bermuda, but getting extremely heavy rain for portions of the island as you go into th uh, Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Let's look at the CMC here. CMC as well, way behind. I mean, I'm not even going to look at the CMC. They have it at 990. That's basically almost like 40 millibars off of what it is now. Icon as well, really far off. And all these models are basically completely off pressure-wise. So it's basically useless to use any of these models right now, except we can get an idea on track. But strength-wise, these models are basically useless. 
I mean, the Icon, though, does get it pretty strong at 949 millibars. Uh, I guess that kind of helps, but they they have it at 985 right now. That's really bad, obviously, not really too accurate. Uh, I guess we can use this as a European here to get an idea here. Let's look at the European really quickly here, uh, see what they have. So European, is a they have it at 977 right now, and they're get, getting as low as 900 and, uh, let's see here, 952. Uh, so yeah, they basically have it getting it pretty strong as well, 952. So they're kind of very close, but again, they also have a gate just missing Bermuda there. Uh, vorticity wise, seeing a really strong amount of vorticity, obviously, could still see some stronger winds just east of Bermuda. Of course, European is going absolutely mental as well. Uh, let's go to the actual, um, let's actually go to the actual, um, the actual vorticity here uh, for the European. So here, look at the latest 12V European again. 12V just came up for the European. This is basically as well what they have pressure or vorticity wise. You can kind of see there, there's the ridge kind of really helping the steering of the storm. Uh, but overall, really strong center there of extreme positive vorticity. This thing's just quite absolutely mental. Uh, but overall, it's most likely going to spare Bermuda, thankfully. And last but not least, let's get a look here at the overall uh, steering pattern. So there you see, obviously, really strong roots. We have a trough right here. Uh, so there's a trough right here, basically. You can kind of see, just like that, that's the general region of what we're seeing here with this overall steering. So there's the ridge up here. There's a high pressure. Uh, and there we have, right now, there's obviously Larry. So obviously, this ridge is kind of just north of the axis. That's preventing it from going anywhere due westward towards Lesser Antilles and Puerto Rico or anything like that. But there's a low pressure there developing an upper level anticyclone, seeing that divergent, divergent actually outflow channels there. So that's obviously keeping the storm getting affected from the actual shear itself. And obviously, you do see some really strong upper level shear, however, again, it's not in the actual low pressure. And a lot of that is unidirectional shear, but with the upper level anticyclone, it's preventing it. And also, a lot of that shear we're seeing there actually from. This storm is obviously from the strong spin, which causes shear. So that's, that's why in strong hurricane, you can see 50 plus knots around the actual storm itself because of that strong vorticity and that strong rotation itself. There is a ridge there. Again, it's going to really stay, just, keep, just staying with the storm here, just keeping it uh, going anywhere. And there you see a trough net developing there. And that's going to be a big factor keeping it. And that's going to just steer it like this. And that's why the rest of you just do like that. So it's going to follow the, that arrow, that second arrow I have. And it has a chance maybe to go to Newfoundland. Nope, it does not because, again, there you see that really intense ridge. Really intense ridge with a trough down here. So that's going to just keep the storm going from anywhere. But overall, a decent pocket of very little upper level shear. So it's going to be a pretty big factor to the storm strengthening in the atmosphere. And then the overall upper level shear getting the storm after a passage of Bermuda. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys later.